Look how wide he is. That is crazy. I've got all high pitched. I sound like Harry. <laughs> I'm Mark Pitchers, wager wearing, tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes. This is the challenge. What, what is the actual plan this week and what, I don't even know what it is, we're filming it as a, like a... It's a challenge. Road. It was like a road trip, or like, like what we did in Germany last year. No, it's a challenge. Like, it's a challenge, since when, has it, since when has it been a challenge? It is a challenge. Since when has it been a challenge? We are, I've got all the dates in the diary of filming challenges, and this does not say challenge. It just says well, put... France. I'd say, I, ages ago, I'm sure I would have said to you. But it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, it, well yeah, it does matter. How? Well, it matters a lot because if we're doing. What, what, is, what, is, what is the challenge? I can't tell you that. Well, if it was a challenge, I would have I done things differently if it was a challenge. What? What, so you'd have put more effort in? I would have put more effort in. I guess it's a match then, is it? No. But what? I don't understand why you'd have. Why you're now you're now literally saying what's the challenge? The, the, what's, what's the challenge? I'm not telling you. You can find out when we get there. Is this because what I did to you at Christmas, you think? <laughs> we always talk about what the challenge is. The no, well, I mean, it just. Well, well, well you, yeah, always, no. you always tell me we're filming a challenge at least. It takes me. It takes me days to mentally prepare for a challenge. Look at you. Look at you at the Christmas challenge. When that was sprung on your last minute, your head went, didn't it? Your, your head went, your ass went, everything went. And you were a mess. And is that what's happening to you? No, it's not. No, you just say you, it's not. you, you bummed I'm, out. I'm just, I'm just You're saying. flapping. You're kicking off. I'm not kicking Because off. you weren't prepared enough for, if this was just a normal session that we were filming, I don't understand why you wouldn't have put in maximum because if effort. I was having, if I was having a match, I would have put in even more effort than what I've already done. I'll be cheating as much as I can. Well, you, okay, and I'll be picking you up when you're cheating as much as I can. What's the challenge? I'm not telling you yet. I'll tell you when we get there. We're not even out of England yet. So if you hadn't noticed, we're on the road and we are going to France. We're going to a venue called the Zoo and Mark has just found out that it's going to be a challenge. So, if, if, this, if anyone thinks that this is in any way set up, I can guarantee it is in no way set up. I mean, I genuinely thought that he knew that this was a challenge. No, you never. I did. You never. I did. I was literally never suggested. I, I might have missed that information out. Oh, ah, well, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's going to be good. Yeah. Mark and Harry back on the road again. What could go wrong? And I'm going to show you how to do a challenge properly. <laughs> ah, here we go. <laughs> What's the plan then? Plan is. Bacon double cheeseburger and a Fanta. That's Fanta? Plan. Yeah. Going all out. Need the sugar now. After that, After that pack a Haribo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After that bad news, I need some sugar. A what sugar bad lift. News? You're bumming me out with challenges. You proper bummed me.
What's up, car freaks, and welcome to what I have just found out is the challenge. Now, we are on the tunnel going into France. So I'm really pumped for this, even though I was not expecting this to be a challenge at all. I still don't know what the challenge is. Don't even know if Harry knows what the challenge is. I think he's just making it up as he goes along. Something I wouldn't do if I was in Harry's position, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but whatever happens, I'm just absolutely pumped to be going over there, hopefully going to catch some really big fish and showing Harry how it's done. We said au revoir, je m'appelle, to the Euro Tunnel, and it didn't take long to eat through the miles in France. That was until we hit a bit of traffic in the city centre. However, after what seemed like hours of listening to Harry's stories of his boarding school glory days, I was ecstatic to find a 24 hour chefless pizza machine just two minutes from the lake. 24 hour pizza? What? I assume you're hungry, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even need chefs anymore. That's yours. Oh, that smells good, actually. It smells really good. Yeah, they are good. They are really good. Here we are, Mark. Happy to be here? Yeah, I'm happy when I've got a pizza in my face. <laughs> Welcome to the zoo. Well, I'm here and I've found them. All I need to do now is catch them. I'm gonna have one rod over on the far margin, one down the near side line here, and uh, I reckon I can get this challenge wrapped up within the hour. <laughs> but no, seriously, it's been, it's been a 14 hour drive for me to get here. I'm absolutely beat, to be honest. Right now, I just wanna get my head down, wake up at first light, get my challenge, whatever it may be. And uh, I reckon I'll be raring to go after I've had a decaf coffee down me, ready to face whatever Harry throws at me. So we just start having a look around the lake with Tom, the owner, and literally the second swim we've come to, we've seen loads of fizzing going on. There must be, well, I'm looking now, probably two patches of fizzing. There was more than that earlier. There's probably about six or seven different patches coming up. So this is looking great. One's having a proper go for it there. Look at that. And that's come short from where it was a few minutes ago. It was a little bit further, so it's definitely carved. There's definitely fish moving around and feeding. I mean, looking at this, it, it's got to be this, this one, hasn't it? Without seeing anything else, you have to act on that. But it all depends on what the challenge is. The challenge might be find the fish, then fish the opposite end of the lake. I don't know. I have absolutely no <laughs> idea what the challenge is. This is looking really encouraging, though. So we've just done a full lap of the lake, uh, two miles around the lake, and we did see fish in, in a few swims or a few carpy signs, but nothing like what was in these original swims here, peg 17 and 18. And even now as we've come back, I'm watching fish still fizzing away in front of us here. So this is where I think I should be. But it all depends on what the challenge is, I guess. So Harry, can I have my challenge? Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to give this to you rather than you reading it out. Mm. You feel like I think you've been on tenter hooks. Mm. Maybe. Ever since. Yeah, so, go on, hit right. me with it. Your challenge is to catch enough fish to get you back to the tunnel. Okay. Pounds equals miles. Yeah. Obviously. Mm. And we are 299 miles mm. from the tunnel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
I am going to fish as well. Mm. And for each fish I catch that is bigger than your last fish, yeah, mm. the weight difference is deducted from your total. Okay. okay. So it's not an out and out match. And okay. I'm not like discounting a fish if it gets bigger. It's just only an weight. arsehole would do that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm being. This is this is obviously way more lenient than Mark is. However, oh, um, yeah, you cannot use any rig that you have ever shown on the challenge. You have to use something different. Zigs, I will allow you to use zigs. Anything other than that, you have to use something different to what you have ever shown on a challenge. Luckily, I don't really show that many rigs in detail on the challenge. I better start looking on YouTube for yeah, different... Yeah, there's, plen <laughs> there's plenty there, yeah. Fox Fishing TV. <laughs> okay, okay. With that knowledge, where do you want to go? Oh, I don't know. Um, seen a lot of fish here, this side of the swim. In 17. But at the same time, I feel this peg has so many more options. I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm not as bad as you were in the last one where your head completely went. <laughs> Your head went, your head went when we were driving here. Yeah, and now I've had a chance to recover okay, from that. Okay. So thank okay, you for giving me. Yeah. If you'd have sprang it on me now, maybe I'd have been like you were. Oh, I should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I've had so, Mark, time to acclimatise. Yeah. Um, no, cool. I can't wait to get started, actually. I really am properly buzzing for this. Me too, actually. With my extremely unfair challenge presented to me, and with only three nights to do it in, I wasted no time in getting the van round to the swim so I could get my kit sorted, enabling me to stare at my tackle box and ponder over which rigs to tie. Just tying up a different rig for the sake of tying up a different rig, what's the point in that? What's your plan? I don't know, I haven't got one. I'm gonna tie up some rig I've never used before. I'm watching them fizzing now and thinking it'd be great just to Type a real simple blowback rig, solid bag right on that. And now I don't know what I've got to do. So I'm probably going to, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do here? So I can't just tie a blowback rig, but just tie it on the shank instead of using a rig rig. No, because that's a blowback rig, isn't it? I'm just tying random knots in, in, in bits of line and What's the purpose of that? There's literally no purpose to it. What, what, what are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> really tired. Quite in that. Do you want me to get to you some shrink tube? Yeah, that might help. Okay, some shrink tube would be, would be good if you could. Thank you. I don't think it looks too so bad actually. What are these called? They're like a multi rig, aren't they? What's a slip D multi rig then? Oh, maybe that's what it is. Is it? <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's definitely not a blowback rig. No. So. It's in, it might be a slip D. It might be a slip D. I mean, is that a D? Yeah, I guess it is. I have no idea. Call it a, a slip D multi. Rig. Yeah. Let's call it that. Multi slip. I don't know. I'm so out of touch with all the modern rigs. So this is the rig that I've tied for the very first time, really. I do like to stick to my tried and trusted two rigs that I use. But I um, don't know what it's called. It's probably got a name. Um, if we think it's a Slip D multi rig, Harry. Uh, that sounds about right to me. Sounds about right. We're not, both of us aren't really sure. But I'm pr I've, I think I've seen that. There's probably people yelling at the tally now saying yes that's what it is so basically the hook baits attached by a little bit of bait floss to a micro hook ring swivel 
and that's fished on a multi-rig um, with a bit of shrink tube over the eye there, over the hook, just to keep it all sort of nice and tight. Obviously when I hook a fish it'll all slide down out the way. Not something I'm really fished with before, certainly not in this sort of form. I fished it with a coated braid for fishing with, with pop-ups. It kind of mimics a hinge stiff rig poorly, which is why I never continued to use it. And yeah, I would certainly never have tied it up using braid. But there we go. It's it's it it it, it is what it is. Do you think it's going to catch a fish? It seems a lot. It seems big and clunky to me. Looking at it, it's not it's not sort of as neat and discreet as I would like. Luckily, though, this is going to be sort of hid inside a solid bag, and when that bag dissolves, all these clunkiness. The clunky components and things will be kind of hidden by the, the contents of the bag. So that's I mean, it's one not good thing. That clunky. It isn't that clunky, You've but got I, a piece of shrink tube, which is the extra bit to what you'd normally use. And sometimes you do use shrink tube. So it's not really that clunky. I think you're complaining a little bit. I think I'm probably being fussy because the shrink tube is bigger than I would like. <laughs> Yeah. It's a but, large shrink tube, not a medium. Yes. I'm probably being overly fussy. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'll catch fish. It will catch fish, that's for sure. It will catch fish, and who knows, maybe I will grow to love it. Well, there's fish really short now. And there's a fish a little bit further, so there's one over there. I think I'll, there's several there, right, okay. kind of in between a group of fish, isn't it really, that one? So there's still fish fizzing in the area and it was really hard to know sort of which fish to cast to. There was sort of three fish fizzing away. So I've just cast a solid PVA bag pretty much in the center of those three fish. But even now there's, there's bubbles coming in a little bit short and to the right. So, there's obviously fish in the area. Fish still fizzing, they're not bothered by that bag landing at all. <laughs> Couldn't see. Happy way it went, it just didn't like splash. I'm not happy about it, put it that way. Funny thing is, is you made that great big massive splash casting right-handed absolutely normally. Mm. You, you laughed at me when I did it left-handed, like the first mm. time I've ever. You weren't visually, that. you weren't visually impaired. You had all, you had every option to control right. that cast. You could see what you were doing. I literally just cast blindfolded into the sun. It wasn't blindfolded, was it? Well, I couldn't see. It might as well have been. Yeah, but you could have used sunglasses for example you should have thought about that before you did the cast i was eager to get a rod in the water on that big fizz of bubbles over while eager. it was there over eager difference is i'm not going to freak out about it and start having a little tantrum on the bank well you're only not having a tantrum now because i've put a camera in your face <laughs> I, you know full well if i didn't have a camera in your mm. face mm. you would be effing and jeffing i did eff and jeff and you'd be doing it even more. Mm. That's something, there's fizz in there. There's still plenty of fish here. There we mm. go. It's kicking off. It's kicking off, that was a nibble. <laughs> a definite nibble. These are so easy to tie, aren't they? What's that? These illusion D-rigs. This is the bit of me. Tying a rig in 30 seconds, done. That's that's my style. I mean, if it's a good rig, I'm happy with that because that took me all of a minute and that was with a bit of fiddling around as well. Could be a bit of me, this. Can't see. Look, Maybe I've been missing out. I'm helping you branch out. Mm. You've been set in your ways for too long. Maybe, maybe. <sighs> 
That looks Scheisenhausen. That was that was absolute That's getting chopped up straight away. That's not going out. That's absolutely woeful. Have they seen it in the water? <laughs> Have they actually sure. tested it in the water and seen how it sats? Nah. I'm pretty not sure they nah. uh, They haven't. So, so that's like exactly the rig that Tom uses. Just imagine how many fish you could catch if you used a decent rig. There's no <laughs> way that's going in the pond. Not a chance. That is terrible. Now, why would you want the eye light? It makes no sense. I just want the eye of the hook, the lightest part of the hook. Make, doesn't make any sense mechanically. Well, I don't know, I don't use it, but like, it, a lot of people use that rig and catch lots of fish. There'll be people screaming down the telly at the moment, being like, you're well, they need a, to go a and, wimp. They need to go and check the rigs. It does. I'm, a look, I'm gonna, I haven't given up on it totally. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a, I'm just gonna have a little, I mean, yeah, you want the hook point to be heavy. I get that, I get that. It just doesn't, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I haven't totally given up on it. So I know that Tom does, like whips his, whips the hook down to in line with the barb. Yeah, that's what, I, that's, that's what I've done there. I've done it more whips down the shank. Yeah. So I haven't gone down as many as that. I've done oh, no, not as in line with the barb, sorry, in line with the point. That's what I've done this does. time. I've whipped it down to the point. So I don't think I'd whipped it down enough. Okay, so we're learning here. Yeah. Yeah, it just sits a little bit halfway down the hook. More movement. That's not too bad. I'm happy with that. That illusion is proper invisible, isn't it? It's ridiculous. I think that looks pretty good. Yep, I'm quite happy with that one, actually. Whilst I dithered and bumbled between rigs and tried to build up my confidence, Harry was busy being extremely noisy and thrashing the water to a foam next door, as if this challenge wasn't already near impossible. It wasn't long before I was ready to get my multi-rig, slip D, shrink tube, slidey ring, beady thingies out there, and I had a special friend to help me get them exactly where they needed to be. Here we go. Ah, no, he can't use a bait boat, like. That's cheating, that is, like. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so you're using a bait boat? I'm using a bait boat. I'm using a bait boat. Why? Spodding's for mugs. Spodding <laughs> is for people that have way too much time on their hands. <laughs> Not standing around spodding. I've got fish to catch, things to do. So yes, I'm cheating. That's, that's my style. With this being a tricky time of year, I decided against using an out and out boily approach, instead opting to quarter fill the hoppers with attractive and easily digestible bits and bobs. Sweet corn is a great early spring bait and made up the bulk of the mix, with its visibility being a vital part of the attraction. To that, I added some boilies and some frozen bloodworm, a big edge when it's cold. So I'm now just sending the boat out to the spot that I found when I was letting around. Um, I've then wrapped up the rod that I was letting around with and I've done exactly the same thing on my fishing rod. I'm just sending the boat out to that same spot to see if it's kind of telling me the same as what I found with, with, the, with the letting around rod. And yeah, pretty much it's exactly how I sort of um, understood the swim where you have a bit of deeper water when it starts to shelve up to the bar and as it starts to shelve up you've got a little bit of a gap between the weed and the start of the bar so let's go forward a little bit it'll just start to shallow up well, now yes it's starting to shallow up I've clipped up so I can't go any further that's just me pulling the pulling the boat back. Oh, there's a fish there, 1.6 metres. Apparently a fish there too. I'm just going to turn a bit further. Bonk. Really hard. Went down really hard on a nice crack. 
I know if I'd gone a little bit to the right there, it would have been in all that sort of thick onion weed. If, I, if I'd gone a little bit left, I'd have been on top of that bar, where it's only about three, four foot deep. So yeah, I'm just it starts to, just till it starts to come up. I mean, I know the subject of bait boats is quite a contentious one. Everyone has their own opinions on them. Me personally, I see the kind of the good, good points and the bad points. But I mean, I know a lot of people say it takes a skill out of fishing, but I mean, if you look at what I've done there, I actually found the spot kind of by hand with my lead in a bout rod, and then basically just used the boat to kind of confirm what I already knew, but used it as a way of getting bait in the spot, on the spot, nice and tight with minimal disturbance. I could have done that with a spod rod, but that did it a lot quicker and a lot quieter. So, yeah. But would I have done the same in England? Don't know, would I have done the same back in England? No, absolutely not. I wouldn't, you'd would have, I? You'd have found that, you'd have chucked out, you'd have put ten, five, five spots over yeah. the top. I know, but yeah. But it's France, so different rules over here, isn't it? <laughs> different laws, different speed. If you've got a different speed limit, then different rules for fishing. That's what I say. Like Germany, no speed limit. Do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not using one. Aren't you? Yeah, so obviously... Aren't you? Well, so obviously my fish will count more mm. than yours Of will. course, yeah. Yours are way more credible. 100%. Definitely. Definitely more credible. 100%. 100%. Mm. Right, so you're going you're gonna to get the spot rod out now, yeah? Oh, I'm going to use the boat with the electric motor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to get over the side. Yeah. I'm not going to cast my rods, though. I'm actually yeah. going to cast my rods. Casting. You haven't even cast your rods. Casting's for mugs. Who wants to be casting? There's no, there's no point in casting. No point. Not when you've got a bait boat. Not when you've got a bait boat. <laughs> well, I don't have a bait boat. You can borrow that one. As if. You're not borrowing that one. No, I don't want to. I'm not letting you. I, I didn't want to before you, did. you didn't let me. You you said you didn't want you, you you just said you didn't want it because you knew I'd take it back and say no I'm not letting you have a, it. That's a lie. It is. It is a lie. Yeah. I mean I'm using a bait boat for the full duration of this challenge. Are you? Yes. That is happening. Imagine how much stick I'm going to be getting right now. It's going to be amazing. With Mark not really having a clue if his rigs would work, I went for the tried and trusted simple hinge stiff rigs on leg clip systems. Similar to Mark's baiting approach, my mix consisted of bits, predominantly being corn, maize, hemp and some boiling. I was pretty hopeful for the night and managed to get sorted just before Mark had placed his final rod. Well there we go. Finally, about 10 minutes before it's getting dark, I managed to get three rods in the water. It's taken all day, but apart from that sort of early fizzing this morning, there's been very little to go on. We have seen a few fish show at the opposite end of the lake. That's a long way away, so in fact, we've seen a couple of, well, a few fish show up there There'll be a lot that we haven't seen, I imagine, showing up there. So I don't know, I don't know how I'm feeling about this. I've just put one rod to the left of Harry's swim. Um, we did see a fish roll there this morning. Um, so I've kind of popped up a marker float where I saw that fish show. And I've just, just dropped a bit of bait around there. And I've got two, two rods fished in the general area where the fish have been fizzing early on this morning. So yeah, hope, hopefully it's an area that they do like to visit and they will come back. And if nothing happens in the night, I'm sort of quite hopeful of an early morning bite. First day has gone very quickly. The first day has been something of a learning day I kind of feel happy with what I'm doing and where I'm doing it. I mean, I couldn't really do any more found fish. Traps are set where I've seen fish. There's not much more I can do, really. The rig tying thing wasn't that much of a bar lake as I was expecting it to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I'm fishing. Just... Brew game's been poor, though. I think if we haven't caught anything by... by sort of 12 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, 
I think I'll be looking for a move at the other end of the lake. Well, I've got one. On. Got one on. Feels feels weighty. I was concerned he was gonna take out your rod that's hemming me in, Mark. <laughs> There he is. That's a nice fish. Oh, I'm not saying a lot, am I? No, you're not. I want to know your full feelings and emotions right now. Feelings? I. <laughs> it's like, get it in, get it in, get it in, get it in. Don't come off, don't come off, don't come off, don't come off. Looks a good 30 for me. Oh, I think he's bigger than that. I think that's a 40 pound. Oh, no, it's not. I think it's a 40 pound. I think that's a good 40 pound. Well, I honestly don't think it is. That's a good 40 pound. It's a 40 pound. Give up, or is that him giving up? Go on, be you giving up. Be you giving up. Give up, give up. Come on, come on. He's in. French units. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. What do you reckon then? He's oh, he's a decent a, fish, isn't he? He's got to be. A, oh yeah, he's a. He's up there. I think he's a mid forty, isn't he? Is he? I don't know. I haven't seen a carp that big for a, a while. Yeah, he's a mid forty. Definitely. I don't know. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Oh, yes. Nailed the length of the hinge rig back. Look at that. Look at that. The length of the hinge rig back. Pretty sure uh, you'd love to be using one of these, Mark. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 47. Yeah, no, it is. 47. That's a good guess by me, actually. <laughs> 47, 11. How about that for the first bite of the trip? A 47 pounder. Absolutely awesome. For its nuts off. I can tell you that and uh, yeah whilst it might not count anything to deducting Mark's points Ali, it doesn't really matter does it because we came to France for some big ones and in the first bite we've got them look at that 47 pounds It's only been about an hour since Harry slipped back his his 47 pound hippopotta chunk. And I'm playing one. It definitely doesn't feel like a 47 pounder, but right now I really don't care. So this was the rod that I put the left of Harry um, where I'd seen the fish roll uh, this morning, right in front of the, the clubhouse. Oh, I'm so cold. My sleeping bag was so warm. Do you have a jacket? Do you have a jacket to hand? Jacket? Yes, please. You're going to shake the hook out. <laughs> 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 that hasn't dropped the lead either, has it? 
What's going on? No wonder the film weird when they're coming in. <sighs> Come on, fish. Oh yeah, you'll do. You'll do. Oh, Here he comes. <laughs> you will do. That is a chunk. Get in that net. Yes! That's way bigger than I thought. I told you it's bigger than 27. <laughs> Look at that. That's a proper chunky one. That is a good fit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, up and running. What looks like a low to mid 30, maybe? I think he's, well, I think he's a it's least, quite, what? I'd say he's a mid. He's wide. He's very wide and deep. Very, very wide. I'm glad you caught yours first. <laughs> yeah. Get the big and over, over and done with. Look at that, he is wide, isn't he? Nice, I'm really happy with that. Mate, that's a bigger. He's got way bigger. He's a bigger. Yeah. Well, he wasn't coming off, that's for sure. He is... Hurry up. 40... Just under 42. <coughs> 42. Ah, oh. uh, that's a lot on a finger. <laughs> 42 pound! Yeah. I said it was bigger than 27. <laughs> 42 pound, how's that for a start? <sighs> well, look at that. First bite for me and a 42 pounder. I've gone from feeling a little bit downbeat after Harry caught that 47. But luckily for me, it counted for nothing. And now I've got this absolute chunk 42 pound! <laughs> what a way to kick this challenge off. <sighs> Thank you. That eats up quite a lot of miles, 40 It 40 does, pounds. yeah. And if that's the average size as well, you've had a 47, this is 42. Won't take many fish, will it? If we can keep these sort of size fish coming. Oh, yes. There we go. Some dickhead was stood on me in line. <laughs> Which dickhead was that? It was, it was me, I stood on your line. Thanks for that. <laughs> Get off me line! <laughs> Your bait boat's broken, it's just dumping, mm, it's mm. dumping stuff out yeah. all over the place. That's the problem with bait boats, it never Is it? the way you mm. want them to. Put a bit of gravel in there. <laughs> <sighs> oh, great. Do you actually know where you're going with this? Yes. I set the GPS. <laughs> <laughs> only, only mugs cast out in the dark and wrap up and tie a little marker knots on the line. And actually look where they're casting. <laughs> So you could literally do this with your eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> Good, huh? And there's you trying and everything. <laughs> Good angling. That, that 
is top angling in my book. Loads of, people, loads of people are saying, Max fish don't count, I'm using a bait ball. Hmm. Photos tell a different story. Well, it's almost, almost daybreak. And I'm playing another fish. This time I'm, back, I'm actually in my swim where I had two rods fished on that silty area on the back of that onion weed. This is where I'd seen fish feeding. Uh, quite a lot of fish feeding yesterday morning and I was hoping that they'd, they'd come back here and it seems they have. I think I'd only just managed to fall asleep that bit. Don't say that. No, say, it, say it when it's in the net, not no, when it's coming up to the net. That is a, a donkey. I can't see because that's completely blinded me. I don't know, that looked really big. What's your French PB? French PB? Yeah. Don't know, I've only ever really been fishing in France three times, I think. This being my third. Yeah, stop giving <laughs> excuses. Well, it's not very big. Oh, it isn't very big. 44, I think. Yeah. I think it's bigger than that. Oh, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd be delighted if it is. Well, I think it's bigger than mine. No, it's not. It's it really, is. really, really not. It it's is. really not. It really is. Up you come. He's got a line wrapped around him. But I don't mind, because I do mind. <laughs> Where's that line? Line's all wrapped around his peck. Oh! And he's he swam into the net. Oh, that was lucky. Just as, oh, just as it pinged off its peck, it kind of swam into the net. Ooh, hello. That's bigger than I thought. Mate, that's an absolute. Oh my unit. god! How did I not think it was that big? What the? Look at that. That's an absolute breeze block of a fish. Look how wide he is! Look how wide he is! That is crazy! I've got all high pitched, I sound like Harry! <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, well done! <laughs> oh, that's crazy! Oh, God. Can you believe it? How's it looking at it? <laughs> I mean, look at it! It's almost light. Let's get some weighing things together. Way Give him a quick way. And Tom, the owner, has said if you catch anything sort of approaching first light, we're okay to drop it in the retainer for, for a short while. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna weigh him up, see what he is, and then we'll um, yeah, we'll get we'll have a proper look at him uh, when it's when it's light. Oh mate, look at it! That is pretty heavy. <laughs> Oh, that is massive. Mark, that could be... <laughs> I don't think it's a PB PB, oh, but no, I'm not bothered, mate. I'm not bothered. Mate, oh, huge. that is quite big. Okay, that's quite big. So my French PB is £44. It'd be nice if he's bigger than that. <laughs> I think, I think you should Could even be a U. No, it's not a Euro PB. No, it's not a Euro PB. But... Get on there! <sighs> it's a French PB. 52.8. What's that? 52.8. No way! Oh, yes. Yes! Oh, I am buzzing with that. I am buzzing with that. 52.8. Oh, wow. It's been a long time since I caught a fish that big. A long time. That's amazing. I'm going to put him in this retainer and drop him in the edge just for a short while. It's not long before first light. I'm going to do that and then 
we can have a proper look at him when it's light. The morning was calm and unseasonably mild. First light quickly arrived and it was time for Mark to get the kettle on before we had a closer look at his enormous mirror. Well, here he is in all his glory, 52 and a half pound, my biggest ever French carp. I never expected anything like this before we came here. <laughs> Absolutely blown away. What a nice fishing it was. Harry kicking things off with a 47, me getting that 42, and then this 52 and a half. It's really, really powerful and really, really heavy. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Well, that's absolutely made my trip. It more than exceeded any of my expectations coming here. And already, pass or fail, I feel like I've won. <laughs> Over the moon with that. Right, go on then big fella, off you go. Gone. I am made up, I'm absolutely made up. I don't care what happens now for the rest, for the rest of this session, <laughs> I really don't. Challenge PB. Challenge PB. Challenge passed. No. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Challenge complete. Ch challenge not complete, not passed. Still got more work to do. I thought it was. I, I thought it was just to catch a French PB. When was that ever said? Well, just then. No. That sounds a better challenge. It sounds a better challenge now than you've done. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you're pretty much halfway there, you're on 94 pounds. It's not halfway there, is it? Right, okay, yeah, a third of the way there, with a third of the time gone. Yeah. Two nights remaining. Mm-hmm. It's a tall order. But we're taller. It's a tall order. Anyway, whatever. Right now, I'm just absolutely buzzing with what's just happened. That's all I'm thinking about for the, the time being. Well, nothing's happened since I caught that 52 pounder and I'm just about to freshen the rods but before I do that I thought I'd show you the rig that I finally settled on. Now the rig itself I was kind of initially going down the D-rig path but I didn't quite like how the hook was sitting. Um, I did try various different lengths of the, of the D itself and although that did improve it, for me it still wasn't sitting quite right. I felt there was room for improvement. So I finally settled on this version and I removed the D entirely. I put on a micro hook ring swivel, which was uh, kind of trapped in place by a small rubber hook bead and the bait was just attached to the micro hook ring swivel with a little bit of uh, floss and just blobbed in place. And this looked much better. When I was testing it in the margin, the hook was sat flat. The hook bait was wafting around enticingly over the top of the hook, almost concealing the hook. Now the illusion itself is absolutely invisible in water. It has enough flexibility to allow that hook bait 
to fly easily in a carp's mouth, but has enough rigidity to make it hard for the carp to deal with. So I do believe this setup has good anti-ejection properties and it seems to be working. Two fish hooked, both absolutely nailed, and yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how things are going. Well, not a great deal has happened during the day, as you'd kind of expect, given the conditions we've got here with a high pressure, very still, flat, calm, bright conditions. Any fish caught during the day would be a massive bonus. And I need those bonuses. So I've had a little bit of a change around. The two rods that I've done bites are still in the water, more in hope than anything else but I'm now sort of looking for other potential spots. I can't just rely on these two spots. If they dry up, if fish move elsewhere, then you know I've got nothing to fall back on. Um, so I've gone out in the, the boat, had a look over at my far opposite margin. There's lots of overhanging trees and snags and cover, which do look great for a daytime bite, you'd think, with it being so bright, you'd think the fish would get in amongst those trees to, to, to escape the, the, the sun. And you know, those snaggy areas are always gonna hold fish anyway. Um, so that's where I've dropped one rod now. So I've got, got one rod by the snags, the other two rods are fishing as they were. And I'm also thinking now for the night ahead. Um, where I had two rods fishing in my swim on that silty area in amongst the, uh, the onion weed, you know, it, it doesn't really need two rods there. I think I'm kind of fishing for the same fish. I don't think there's like huge groups of fish where it's going to be kicking off left, right and centre, not in that corner anyway. Maybe it's more so in open water, but I think where I am, I don't think there's like stacks of fish where I can sort of get a, a multiple hit of fish. But I want a multiple hit of fish. <laughs> so I'm now looking for an open water spot where potentially, you know, if it does kick off, I can put three rods in a spot and it can be absolute carnage. And I think I've found the spot, maybe, I don't know. But what I have found is a, a, a very narrow, bumpy gravel bar at about, I don't know, about 90 yards range. Um, there's not a great deal else out there in that sort of open water. So it is quite a significant feature. Hopefully it's a feature that the carp frequent. So what I'm gonna do now, I've just popped up a float on the spot. I've had a cast around it with a leading rod. Um, I'm going to go out in the rowing boat, dump some bait there. Um, I've wrapped out my uh, legend rod as well around that. So I'm going to go out in the boat, dump some bait on it and just leave it settle for a bit. And then tonight I'm going to send the bait boat out and uh, dump it on, on that same spot. And if it all kicks off, then who knows, might end up putting a couple of rods on that spot. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves at the moment. I'm just fishing for one fish at a time, and I'm quite happy with the way things are going. Two rigs tied. Two! That's never been done before, and I think I'm gonna tie more. That's never been done before, never. Four rigs pre-tied. Not by you on a challenge. <laughs> Not by me ever. Is that, a, is that a sign of confidence for the night? Uh, well, it is, it is mostly night bites. I'm going for a record now. I'm going for a world record for pre-tied rigs. Four. Is that how many you're going to bring with you when, uh, when you do your trial with Rob? Uh, oof, wow. Well, it's two rods each, so I need two rigs for the rods. I'm just gonna have two. Oh yeah, that's what that's what you got to do, isn't it, to get in England team? Ah, I'll just buy some buy some ready tied rigs. <laughs> Touch and cloth. It's just back out with the GPS. Of course, standard. 
so carpy. <laughs> so carpy. Doesn't I mean this pretty much does go against all laws of carpiness. Mm. Oh yeah, totally. That's what makes it so carpy. Going against the grain, isn't it? I mean, I really should have set the horn button, then I could have just set the bait boat back on its own. Schoolboy error, that wasn't it? Absolute schoolboy, not set in the home. Never mind. I'll have to use my fingers instead. Well, that's it, that's the final rod in position and I'm not sure how I'm feeling going into tonight. I feel like I'm fishing the best I can at the moment. I've got two rods on areas that I've already produced fish. One on a, on a new spot which I really like the, the look of and the feel of and I'm sure it's likely to be visited by the carp so if nothing happens tonight then I don't know where that puts me. <laughs> I don't know what else to do and the fact of the matter is I really do need to catch tonight it's quite evident that we're not going to be sort of bagging up and it's not going to be run after run and double takes triple takes all going off you know there are only going to be a few opportunities here and I need to make the most of every opportunity possible if I'm to even stand a chance of passing this challenge It has not long been dark. I think Mark put his last rod out probably about half an hour ago. Yep. And yeah, I am bent in to what feels like another good zoo carp, zoo creature. That's you. And uh, yeah, well. Let's hope it's over 52 and a half pounds. <laughs> Feels really heavy. It is sort of fighting like a big one, isn't it? It really, really is fighting like a big one. This has fought so hard. You have minced about quite a lot. I have well. not. You have. Well, if I have, let me. I shouldn't judge people. If they want to mince about, they can. Can mince. Will mince. It's exactly. There he comes. Go on then. Yes. 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 Oh. Awesome. What a good start to the evening that is. You really milked that one. Oh, that beat me up. Yeah, I did milk it. I did. Look at this. Oh, I mean, he's, that's, that's still a bit fetch. Of course it is. <laughs> no, it's not as big as we both thought. Both but it's, he's, is he going on for 40? He's, is yeah, it a 40? Yeah, no, he's a, he's a 40, I think. If you He's not as wide, but if you roll him onto his side, he's pretty deep. Yeah. Awesome, well done. Yeah. Well, I think you're safe. Think you're safe. <laughs> For now. For now, yeah. Okay. Are you going to put a light on it? It's hard. Huh? 30, 7, 10. Yeah, yeah, 30, 7, 10. Nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Proper beat me up. Fair play. Good on you. <laughs> Good on you. Well done. Well done, Mr. Carp. Well, there he is. This one absolutely beasted me. I can still feel him tensing up now 
he wants to beat me up just as much on the bank I think as he did in the lake if I'd have lost this I'd have sworn it was a really really big fish you know something akin to the last one that Mark caught but he's not I can't take any points any weight any miles off of Mark but you know when you're catching fish of this quality as long as I can peg Mark back at some point I'm not going to be too sad what a fish Big there, didn't he? Yeah. Mm, this is thirty-seven pounds. Well, another carp for me. This one looks to be a mid 20, around about. So yeah, one of the smaller residents of the zoo. We're not gonna muck him about. We're just gonna unhook him in the net and let him go. Yeah, I'm not making the impression on the score, but Mark hasn't actually caught anything tonight yet so far. I've had two. So I guess in that respect, that's good news for me. Go on then. Off we go. It is literally just got light. It's very grey. No, not quite misty, but the cloud is low. And my right hand has just ticked off. So sort of third bite. Almost of the night. Almost of the night. So yeah, it's been a quiet one for you, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. I had uh, two bream in the night. And whereas the first night I was getting liners and indications, I wasn't getting any of that last night at all. The fish have definitely moved out of that, that area to my right. The wind has changed and is pushing down the other end of the lake. So a move is afoot. We were literally just saying we're probably going to move. Um, yeah, there's one area down the other end where fish have sort of shown not, not loads but consistently shown I think that seems like the place to go who is it little fella ah shame there wasn't more fish in front of me and you would keep catching these these would do nothing who is a he's a right little fella and actually yes they Come on. Yeah. Oh, another one for me. That makes three last night-ish this morning. And no impression on Mark, but I mean, I'm winning. I'm winning. I'd say I'm winning. I don't know. For me, the winner is the biggest fish of the week. That's but that's not the that's not the win. That's not. Well, it is we're in doing. my eyes. That's, well, it's not. Because well, it is. We're here doing a challenge. Well, how in that sense are you winning when you've made no impact whatsoever on my mileage? How does that make you win? You've not caught anything tonight, and I've caught three. Mm, it, I, I, well, that's that's a match the matchman's attitude in you, isn't it? Really. Whereas I just want to have the biggest, heaviest thing making my arms hurt while I'm holding it up. Is that going to make your arms hurt? Oh, actually, yeah, it probably would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm winning. You're losing. I, I, I see it very differently.
Come on, you fucking thing. Well, there he goes. Well, it really hasn't happened for me here last night. I've not had any liners or anything really. Um, the one rod I had the most confidence in was kind of focused into the, the, the middle of the lake or the centre body of the lake, if you like. I had two bream on it. Um, so, yeah, I need to move. I need to catch 200 pound of fish in 22 hours without any reply from Harry. So, yeah, I'm up against it. And one thing for sure, I'm not going to pass it by staying here. So I'm getting everything packed down. Uh, there is an area down towards it, the other end of the lake where we have seen fish showing. And that's where I'm going to head off to now. Where should we go today, Lord Bastard? Well, Charrington, I shall tell you where we're going today. First of all, you're going to take all my equipment around the other side of the lake. Move! That would be good. <laughs> Oh, wowie, but Lord Bastard, my <laughs> me, me hands, hands are too frail to carry that big heavy box. Charrington, get round there and move my kit, bosh. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord Bastard, I can't. My hands hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That would make brilliant, a brilliant series, wouldn't it? Adventures of Lord Bastard and Dog's Body Charrington. Right, here we go. No more bream, just lots of carp. There's one. Oh, this is looking so much better. So yeah, this is the area where we've been seeing them. Even while we were packing up over there, we've seen a, a fish crash out. And literally as I've walked up into the swim, another one's shown. So this is, look, this is looking good. This is the area where we have been seeing them pretty much from the start of the session, really. Um, it's looking good, it's looking good. I don't know if I'm going to do the night in here, I don't know. But it's definitely worth a, a, a day session at least and then sort of assess the situation as we go on. But right now I just want to get the van up here, get the gear out and get fishing. What are you tying up there? I said I'd never do it. I said I would never ever do it. I'm tying up a Ronnie rig. I'm tying up a Ronnie rig. For the first time in my life. First time in my life I'm tying up a Ronnie. Why? Well, Tom the owner said it's pretty weedy up this end of the lake. Um, so I would love to be fishing with a hinged diff rig. I think I've done that at least once before <laughs> on the challenge. <laughs> so. I'm going to do the a kind of a similar-ish kind of variation type thing of a hinge stiff rig. Nowhere near as good mechanically, but it's easy to tie, I guess. And it'll still offer me a nice pop-up presentation that I haven't used before. Yeah, it's a bit hinge stiff riggy, just with... I don't know. It's very similar, isn't it? It's very, very similar. Who knows? I may, I may grow to love it. Yeah, just like you did with your illusion. Yeah, that worked out really well. Yeah. Got to go into these things with an open mind, haven't you?
So all I'm doing right now is literally just sending out the boat to what I believe to be the area where I've seen fish show and where we've been sat at the other end of the lake. They've kind of been in the center of this island, but not really close to it. I'm thinking it's that sort of vicinity. It's, it's not far out at all. I just want to drop a nice little trap. Bottom's pretty flat out there. Kind of about eight feet, pretty flat, not really doing a lot. Yeah, it's, it's flat as a pancake. Just feel this down, see what it lands like. Nice and firm. So that's, that's fishing nicely, it's not in a load of weed or crap that went down with a, a fairly nice thud. Yeah, happy with that. So, um, probably need six fish. In reality, probably needed 12, 13 fish to pass this challenge, which right at the beginning, I thought isn't really achievable given that it's still really cold. We're only just going into March. So I think it's, it's been out of reach from the start, but well, Harry had to prove a point, didn't he? Well, you set me a challenge that was out of reach from the start. It was <laughs> bloody snowing. <laughs> You could have done that. It was snowing. If you'd have picked, if you'd have picked that venue, we went. We ended up from the start. You could have passed that. No, I still don't think I would have done. No, you wouldn't have had your turkey, would you? No. It is. You'd have had everything, but. Yeah, but it wouldn't have been a pass, would it? Mm. No. No. Be honest. Mm. Would you agree that this has been the most out of reach challenge? you've set me so far. Um, Bearing in mind, I have needed from the from the get-go, in reality, about 13 fish in three nights. I just would say, coming. yeah, I'd say, yeah, it is the most out of reach, but it is not as out of reach as the challenge you set me. Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. So, <laughs> so, two fingers to you, actually. Yeah. Like, give it a go, because I bloody gave it a go. Well, I'm giving it a go. Well, yeah. And then... The chances of me passing this were very, very slim. Okay, granted, not as slim as you passing the Christmas challenge. See, so, so far, what you've done is the opposite to what I did. I started really slowly and and built up to a little bit of a crescendo where I was almost in it. You're going to start really quickly. Boom, 40, 50, then just peters out. No, I think, into, I think I'll get something. nothingness. I I've had a 52 pounder. I'm not bothered about that. I am. If you don't pass the challenge, your fifty-two pounder doesn't count. You can't count it. Literally, delete the a, photo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. I haven't sent you the photos yet. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Holding that back. <laughs> yeah, erase it from my memory. Never happened. <laughs> I'm into a fish. Forgive me for being a little bit quiet. I'm just aware that it's going near, near lots of trees and branches and things. It's right on the surface. I just managed to get some bank sticks in the ground to get the alarms in. And had a bit of a twitchy little take. Bobbin went up and then just hit the deck. And initially I thought I'd, I thought I'd been done. I thought I'd been picked up. Yeah, I thought I'd been picked up. The fish had shook the lead off and the rig. This is not nice. It's very grating. Boat's going away. Can you pass me the net, please, when I get in? That was very cooperative of him. 
All right, I can take off this life jacket slash girdle. Oh, God. First fish I've hooked on a Ronnie rig. It's really high up in the, in the water. It's just on the surface. No, not again. Gracie, Gracie. <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's nice when you lift the net and the, the that, don't they don't quite fit. <laughs> That'll do. Seems a long time since I caught something, so anything would have done, but that will really do. That is a good fish. Happy days. Worth the move already. Still angry, mate. Well done. Thank you. On a Ronnie rig. On a Ronnie. Look at me. Losing, losing your virginity. <laughs> yes. So I said that's about thirty-seven pound. Harry said if that's thirty-seven, instant pass for me. Really? Yeah. Wow. If that's 37, instant pass. So anywhere between 37 exactly and 37.15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I reckon that's 37 still. Oh, instant pass coming up. Pass by default. I like them. They're the best passes. I mean, he is rather nailed. Quite impressive hook hold. Yeah. Look at the size of that peck. Look at his Darrells. Never wanted this to be under 40 pound more <laughs> in my life. <laughs> I think I should get to look at the scales this time. Keep no. you in suspense. No, no, I'll, I'll read the scales. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Well, can I show look them to me? Look over my shoulder. No, no, show them to me. I'll come round this way then. Oh. <laughs> I don't trust you. Right, okay, we ready? Ow. There you go. I wasn't, I wasn't far <laughs> off. I was closer than you. I said he was a 40. Yeah. So you weren't closer than, to, than me. Well, whatever. Well, that move has definitely paid off. It seems like a long time ago that I caught that 52 pounder, but we had seen fish up here. It was obvious we had to move and it's paid off already really quickly. We've already been in this swim about three hours, I think, if that. And we've got this fish not far off 40 pound. So that puts some significant mileage on my tally and on the road to getting home. Okay, so Mark has just nipped to the shops after catching that fish. He doesn't seem to want to capitalise on his opportunity. Although actually I just said, no, you need to go to the shops because I need to get my rod sorted. So yeah, I am getting my rod sorted right now and I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going all out on hinge stiff rink, hinge stiff rink, hinge stiff rig, pink pop-ups, Camatex boom section, rigidity hook section, and uh, yeah, that is what I'm going to be using. That is what I have had three out of my four bites on. I did put out a sort of critically balanced corn rig, but that's only produced one fish and, and, the, and the hinge stiff rig with the pink pop-up. I think it's a perfect spring tactic, and that 
is what I'm going to be going for. I am going to be doubling up with Mark. I want to keep my eyes on him because I think he's got a really good chance of doing this tonight. There has been a lot of fish out in this area showing. Um, I'm going to not completely steal his, uh, his zone. I'm going to be fishing out here. But I still think it's a good area to get some bites. And I really, really need to get bites tonight because I know that Mark's going to catch fish and there is no way I'm going to let him win this challenge. Um, yeah, I think I'd never live it down if he won this one and I've tried very hard to make it as difficult as possible for him. I could have gone further, but I think... Catching a few tonight will get this in the bag for me. So it's our final night here now. Just tucking into park and mash and reg. And I really wish this wasn't our, our last night. I've really enjoyed it here. And um, yeah, I, I do wish we had just, just one more one more night. I feel like today I've, uh, I've learned a lot. And uh, I feel like I'm just sort of getting into the session properly i'd love to spend a few more a few more days here but we can't and i just hope that uh before it's time to pack up i can put another five carp on the bank which is what i need really to get myself back home well it's just after 2 a.m i've got one well I'm hooked into one anyway. I'm not gonna lie. I kinda hoped I'd had about three fish by now. But, uh, well, I should just be grateful for what, for what I've already had, really. Yeah, I think we've got about six hours, haven't I? before we have to hit the road. So hopefully this is just the start of a massive feeding spell where it all kicks off and I can't keep a rod in the water. He's, uh, he's a few miles in him anyway. Right, this is it, come on now. Doing that. Oh, that's it. That's it. There we go. There we go. There we go. All the way in. Yes! That's not a bad fish, actually. Let's have a look at him. Got a bit of width to him. He's a weird wonky one, isn't he? So he's hard to... What are we saying, 35s? Well, that bite took a lot longer than, than I expected and hoped for, really. And at 32 and a half pound, this is the smallest fish of the session for me. It puts me on, I think about 100, and, I haven't even been counting to be honest, but I think about 166 miles, 67 miles, something like that. So yeah, I've got a long way to go, a lot to do. And I kind of need a bit of a miracle, really, if I'm to pass this challenge which is what I've needed from the start, let's face it. 
But, you know, stranger things have happened. I basically need to get, let's see what I could, what I could do it in. I basically need three mid fifties in the next uh, five and a bit hours. So yeah. Three would three mid fifties would smash it. Just just low fifties. Could three fifty. Okay. Yeah, so three fifties is what I'm <laughs> what I'm hoping for. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, that's all I need. Right, let's slip it back and start hauling them fifties in. Well that was foolish. Well, that's, I make that time. We really have to get on the road. As much as I don't want to rail in, I'm gonna have to. I'm uh, really surprised that nothing else happened last night. I thought, I thought I could have been onto something. It could have kicked off, but it was very quiet. Only didn't really get any, any liners or indications, didn't hear anything. So yeah, really quiet night last night, and I guess that looks like his challenge failed. I say it looks like, because it depends on how you rate it as a fail, what the parameters are for a fail. I mean, the way I see it, I've caught more than Harry on weight, which as you said yesterday, that's what matters. Yesterday, you said that's, that's what really matters. Oh, I said numbers. We've both caught the same, oh, yeah, yeah. but uh, on weight, I've done you good and proper. So, that's a win. I have added two new rigs to my armory. I learned how to tie a Ronnie rig and slidey ring, beady hook rig. And with that knowledge, can you imagine how good I'll be now? <laughs> knowing how to, how to tie four different rigs <laughs> straight in the England team. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, oh, and the 52 pounder, let's not forget the 52 pound French PB. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I'm calling this a pass. Yes. Challenge complete. Yeah, but it is actually a fail. So. Nah, is it though? Is it though? Yes. That is it though? Yes. You give me a challenge that at this time of year was almost impossible. It would have needed a miracle. If we'd have done it in another six, eight weeks, yeah, yeah, game on. But really. You gave me a challenge in the snow that was more impossible than this. <laughs> so, serves you bloody right. It's a fail. Get in the car. We're going back to England. Okay, maybe. Maybe. <laughs>